Hey there everybody, it's Mark Crowley. I'm back with another How to Draw video. Today we're going to be learning how to draw a chibi-style genie of the lamp. It is based on an illustration that I created for my new book, Chibi. Uh, maybe I can talk a little more about that later, but for now let's get into doing this drawing. I've uh, put a square here in place to show people the size that I'm working at. It is three inches on all sides. That works out to around seven and a half centimeters. And I've just put a line right down the middle there. I'm going to go ahead and get started with some basic guidelines for the head. Okay, so you see it's basically uh, perfectly round up on top, and then over here, because the head is turned in a three-quarter point of view, we just get a little indication of the uh, cheek there. This is a common kind of uh, chibi head shape that I've uh, used in a lot of my videos. Uh, and uh, if you want to, you can have it come down to a point for the chin right here. I suppose that's optional, really. Uh, let's go ahead now and add uh, just a couple of little ovals for the eyes. Now the first thing to notice about these eyes is how low they are on the head. Uh, typically in chibi drawings, the eyes very low on the head, which gives them this very uh, youthful, almost baby-like appearance. And these are not the entire eyes, these are just the irises, uh, the sort of colored areas uh, at the center of the eyes. Uh, and now I think it's time to move on to, well, let's draw the uh, upper torso and sort of the contour heading down uh, into the legs. Okay, so you can see, kind of looking almost like a mermaid at this point, and there is going to be an effect of her legs uh, kind of turning into smoke, you know, and uh, all of that rising up out of the uh, genie's lamp, which I'll probably put over here somewhere. Um, but the thing to pay attention to really is uh, where this, is sort of the angle of this line of the upper torso, and I'm leaving blank space here because there's going to be an arm uh, in front there, uh, as she reaches the waist, which is really quite close to that uh, cross hairline there. And then uh, we get uh, wide curving lines here for the thighs. And then once you get down here, you don't really have to pay too much attention to those lines. Like I said, they're going to vanish uh, as the drawing continues. Let's go ahead then and draw, uh, well, we'll draw the first of the two arms. So I decided to just go ahead and draw the second uh, arm at the same time. Uh, the key thing here, I would say, is to pay attention to the, uh, the width of the upper arm. Uh, in this case, kind of a cartoony style where the, um, the lower arm, the width, is very similar to the upper arm, which is, of course, not true. Uh, to real human anatomy, but we're drawing chibis here. We don't have to worry too much about real human anatomy. Uh, note that both of the sort of fingers, these sort of triangular areas of the hands, they both sort of cross those two uh, lines right there. So that might help with your placement of things. Uh, maybe just one last thing. Let's go ahead and draw a line here that uh, delineates the legs. So now we have completed the basic contours uh, of the legs, and we can move on to doing some real-time drawing uh, for pretty much the remainder of the video, though I think the coloring section is going to require some time-lapse. A little visit from our old friend, <laughs> old man time-lapse. I'm going to add uh, uh, an extra line here that's going to be for her hair. Um, and she has um, these sort of enormous bangs uh, in front, and so I'm going to draw a whole sort of secondary line here that uh, kind of follows that first uh, that first line of the scalp that we drew, except it's going to go past and come all the way out here. I'll hold off on the details of this, uh, but suffice to say it's going to get split, you know, into lines for the bangs. And then um, let's go ahead and draw an ear, just one over on this side of the head. Um, and I think you might be able to see just a hint of the other ear over there. And I'll put a line in here to sort of complete that. And what I'm going to do right now, shockingly, is erase this whole uh, section here because this uh, is going to be replaced with uh, lines of the hair being pulled back into a uh, ponytail, a sort of classic genie of the lamp ponytail. And speaking of that ponytail, let's go ahead, I'm going to make this rather long kind of tube almost that holds the ponytail in place. I'm not sure why I thought that was a good idea, but I did when I first designed this character. Uh, incidentally, I don't have a name for this character. If you can think of one, please 
let me know in the comments section. Uh, so I'm making a big sort of cartoonishly flowing um, ponytail back here. She's a magical creature, so her ponytail does not have to obey the laws of gravity. I mean, she herself is just going to be floating around, as we expect good genies to do. So, uh, you know, you can follow the exact shape that I'm doing here, uh, or you can come up with your own, but I think the key is to sort of think about the, um, the sort of flow of the hair. So, for example, I'm having this these lines uh, come across here like it's all got pulled very tightly into this tube, the ponytail tube. And then these lines are showing the sort of flow of the hair, almost like it's a, a river or something. A river of hair, gently flowing down the mountainside. Uh, but as you come down here, those lines are helping you see um, the directional flow. And I'm going to ha have the hair actually kind of twist around at this point. And I'm going to erase the guideline just so you can see a little better. But it's sort of like the hair is turning in on itself. Uh, flipping around and then you see lines coming out this way on the other side. Does that make any sense? Probably not. <laughs> Nothing new on my channel. Uh, and then we're gonna flip this around. I want this to kind of uh, keep spinning until it finally comes to like a curly cue. A curly cue <laughs> over here on the far side. So like I said, you know, you, you should certainly feel free to play around and come up with your own hairstyle, an entirely different hairstyle. If you are so inclined, make it your own, people. Uh, but now that we've got that in place, I think I can uh, get back to the details of the face. Um, let's see if I can zoom in just a little bit here. Okay, so like I said, these are just the irises of the eye, so it's time now to add the uh, eyelashes that will complete uh, the eyes. And she's sort of like, as she floats by, she's looking back at us, and so, uh, by adding these extra lines of the eyelashes. And I'm going to make the eyelashes rather long. Um, it appears that she is sort of glancing back at us. Hang on, let me do the other eyelash and then hopefully the illusion will be complete. And yeah, for some reason in the original illustration I I saw her as having very long, sort of fancifully long eyelashes. And I always like to get a little highlight in there, a little circle. But I'm going to give her kind of glassy, almost spooky, uh, pupil-less eyes, eyes with no pupils, um, which is indeed what I did in the original illustration. I always like to get one little line in there that's the fold of the upper eyelid. And let's drop in some eyebrows. I was looking at my original illustration and realized that there were no eyebrows. <laughs> Oops. In the original illustration. Um, but it's largely covered by the bangs anyway. So here we are uh, drawing the individual lines of the bangs. And, and I like to reach a sort of a, a straight up and down line. Uh, that's right in the middle of the forehead before it begins to curve in the opposite direction. So I'm always paying attention to the curvature of these lines. And I like to get at least one little stray hair. That classic curly stray hair that I seem to add onto all of my characters. And um, I'm going to just put one or two lines inside this ear to um, add to the structure. But let's give her earrings. Again, something that was in my original illustration. I saw her as having big, sort of crescent-shaped uh, hoop earrings. So let's get the other one in there. And I always like to have the second one maybe turned a little in space. So it's not a neat replication of the first one. And let's have just a tiny little dot for nose way over here near this eye. And just get a gentle little happy smile, although I feel like it's a little too low. Oh, look at that, erasing already. I'm going to raise it up just a bit. You know, the, the relationship between the nose line, nose line? The nose dot, I suppose it is, and the mouth is very important uh, to get those right, you know, kind of closer, uh, this line closer to the nose than it is to the chin. I find that that is a, a surprisingly important thing. 
And I'm drawing like smaller than I normally do. I don't know if anyone notices that, but uh, for whatever reason, I went with a three inch square instead of a four inch square. So you're racing away just a little bit of the guideline. And I thought I would give her um, like a vest. For some reason that seems to be part of the, the uniform of a uh, genie. Do genies have a uniform? And if they do, do they buy them at a genie uniform supply store? I don't know. Uh, but she has this kind of halter top, if that is indeed what they are called. And uh, it won't really look like a halter top, I suppose, until I get another line down here that is the waist line of her lower clothing. We're going to get to that in just a little bit. But uh, we got to get a couple of lines in here for the neck. And very often you get lines for the collarbone. Why not? And we need a little dot here for the belly button, that genie, that classic, classic genie belly button. And I feel like this needs to be sort of redrawn just a bit. I'm just erasing all over the place today, folks. And there we go, we got the upper body and we're getting real close to being done with things. I want to add a thumb to each hand. A thumb for every hand in the kingdom. Um, so I'm going to add that in front, but basically not going to draw individual fingers. I, th I feel like when you get into chibi land, you're, you should feel free to avoid the pain and strain of drawing fingers. And just get the one thumb over here. Maybe give just a little curve to the fingers gracefully pointing upwards. And that basically gets us near the end of uh, drawing her body. Uh, I know I'm about to do my classic mistake of uh, forgetting uh, where the camera is. So hang on a second, I'm going to shift focus one more time. Okay, so what I imagined happens here is that she's got these sort of like almost a belly dancer's uh, translucent uh, uh, sort of pants, except that it, the, that turns into the smoke, you know, uh, the coming out of the lamp. Um, and I think when I add coloring, this will be a little clearer. But um, this part probably hugs her body uh, tightly up here near the waist. And I'll draw a second line just to sort of finish that off. Um, but this represents the sort of gauzy, translucent material. And that's why I'm kind of erasing, well, I definitely need to erase this guideline. Be gone, pesky guideline. But in this whole area here, the legs are beginning to sort of fade away into the smoke. And this is where we get to repeat uh, this sort of serpentine shape of the hair. Uh, we get to repeat that with her body, uh, or the lower part where her feet would be, I suppose. And it turns into smoke. And I find one way, one good way of indicating smoke is to have it actually loop around on itself. So the, this area of the smoke is coming in front, and then this is looping around. Just getting kind of loopy. <laughs> today. Curly, please stop with the puns. And then that uh, leads us over to the actual, hang on a second, I need to refocus one more time. That leads us over to where the uh, lamp itself is. And I'm going to maybe change this just a little bit to allow uh, space for drawing the lamp. And there really is a kind of a specific shape to a uh, genie's lamp. I remember as I looked for uh, as I looked for reference on this, I'm sorry, I see myself again and again coming up against the uh, edge of the frame here. So I'm going to try to get the lamp started a little earlier in the drawing. But it, there's this wide sort of oval shape of the lamp. And I may well have looked at the one that in Aladdin, you know, the movie, the Disney film Aladdin to get my idea for what a classic uh, genie's lamp looks like. But uh, yeah, there is, a, there is this sort of specific shape that is very low and wide. And um, gotta have a handle. 
And that is going to kind of bring us to the end of my little lesson. Now, uh, I'm afraid I'm going to really have to do all of the coloring and inking and everything in uh, time lapse. I apologize if the, those of you who wanted to get a lesson on coloring. It's not going to happen today. Um, but uh, I have, you know, some of these videos get quite long and people see, what, 20 minutes, 30 minutes? I don't have time for that. So I'm going to go ahead and do it, all the rest of this in time lapse and we'll be back with a few final words. All right, well, that brings us to the end of the illustration. Sorry I had to speed through so much of that in uh, time lapse, but maybe I can do a separate video someday that really focuses uh, mainly on coloring and inking uh, a chibi illustration like this. But of course, it can never be finished until we add the blushies, which I will do with this nice little blushy pink colored pencil. I don't know if that's the technical name for it when you go to the store. <laughs> Ask for it by name, the blushy pink pencil. Hang on, I want to show you the original illustration that this picture was based on. So this is my newest how to draw book, Chibi. Many thanks to those of you who have ordered it. I greatly appreciate the support, but I did want to show you here on page 77, there's the uh, original illustration that this one was based on. Uh, similar in so many ways, but slightly different here and there. But I think it's high time for me to lay down this blushy pencil. I want to thank you all for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it, and I'll be back with another one real soon.